There is no doubt that SteelSeries has a lot of different gaming mice, and if you're in the market like me trying to pick up a light wireless gaming mouse, then this is a brand that's got various options. Their Aerox series lineup offers three different kinds of wireless mice, and I'll be going over all three of them in this video to see which one could be the best one for me, and possibly for you. That'd be sweet! So stick around if you want to see this whole review and comparison. Hey everyone and welcome back to Tech Up. In this review, I'll be going over all the SteelSeries Aerox wireless gaming mice and of course see which one's the best. Obviously, there's a ton of wireless gaming mice out there to choose from, but SteelSeries has made a name for themselves with their mice, and I wanted to give them a try. In this review, I'll first go over what you get, then check out the build quality, features, and specs for all of them, and later give you a sound and switch test of the buttons to let you know what they sound like and what I think when using them. On top of that, I'll also go over how they perform and talk about the grip of each mouse to give you an idea of what each are like and eventually talk about what each mouse is good for so you can decide which one might be for you. By the way, this is an honest unpaid review and I hope it helps you out in determining which one to get. So first and foremost, let's go over what you'd be getting for each mouse. From the looks of it, you'd be getting all the same stuff. This includes the mouse itself, along with the user manuals, a 6 foot USB Type-C to USB-A charging cable, as well as a USB Type-C wireless dongle, and USB Type-C adapter. Anyways, right after unboxing all the mice, I looked into the build quality for all of them and they all have that same matte plastic finish. I noticed that this plastic has that textured matte finish for that added grip all around the mouse. On top of that, all of them are right-handed mice per Steel Series but the Aerox 3 can actually be for people who are left-handed after testing it out. However, if you're left-handed, you wouldn't be able to use the side buttons easily though. But as for the Aerox 5 and 9, it can't be used ambidextrously. Anyways, when testing them out, I have to say for the light plastic material they are made out of, the build quality is great. I was expecting some potential creaks and squeaks, but nope. so that was great. However, maybe with time and use, it might be different, but all of them are built great out of the box. As for their weights, the Aerox 3 is the lightest of the bunch, while the Aerox 5 and 9 are obviously the heaviest, but they all are respectively light mice, compared to my G502 which I'm currently using. Yeah, it's a brick, but it served me well, and I'll point out something about this mouse that SteelSeries could have added to these mice towards the end of the video. Anyhow, the honeycomb design makes all of them great lightweight gaming mice, and in addition to that, they are all rated IP54, meaning they are resistant to any dust or splashes of water, but I wouldn't risk testing that out. No, hard pass. As for the rest of the features, the virgin grade PTFE feet are excellent on all of them, and I'll cover that in more detail when I go over them and how they perform. However, one of the biggest differences between all these mice are their dimensions and the amount of programmable buttons they have on them, and that's something which I'll also cover in just a bit. But one of the most noticeable features is that they all offer RGB lighting which can be adjusted when installing and using their SteelSeries GG software. One of the coolest features I noticed that you can activate in their software is the Illumination Smart Mode, which turns off the lighting on the mice when you're using them and turns the lighting back on when you're not using them. This is certainly a neat feature that can be a great battery saver, and on top of that, there are also other settings in here that will further help with reducing less of your battery on your mouse, and it's available for all of these mice. Now, speaking of the battery, all of these have a different battery life, and it all depends on which mode you use them in. You can either use them in a 2.4 GHz wireless connection or Bluetooth mode. And here is how long SteelSeries proclaims their mice can last for. And let me tell you, these mice aren't going to last that long by default with the lighting on them in the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth mode. Personally, you won't get close to these figures. You'd essentially have to turn off the RGB lighting on all of them to get somewhat near these values after testing them out. As for the rest of the specs, the sensor specifications are all the same across all three of these mice, and I'll cover the sensor in more detail when I go over how well they all performed later. But before I talk about all of that, let's go over the sound and switch test for each of them so you can get an idea of what they sound like and if they are a good match for your sound profile. 
Now, starting off with the Aerox 3, this mouse offers a high-pitched clacky sound on the left and right mouse button, as well as on the DPI and side buttons. As for the scroll wheel, it has that standard feel to it and offers a nice scroll with a soft sound profile. As for the golden micro switches on the left and right button, they offer good travel with a rating of 80 million clicks. So, here is its sound test. Now, as for the Aerox 5, this mouse seemed to have the exact same sound like the Aerox 3 across all the buttons and the mouse wheel. It offers the same switches and is also rated for 80 million clicks. Here is the sound it produced. But when it came down to the Aerox 9, that clacky high pitch sound you heard in the Aerox 3 and 5 wasn't as present on this mouse. As for this mouse, its left and right mouse button, along with a DPI button and scroll wheel, offered a lower pitch sound, and the side buttons sounded pretty thocky when compared to the other side buttons, even though it has the same switches and switch rating. Here is its sound test. Now, when I tested the Aerox 9 and 5 side by side, I bet you can hear the difference. As for the Aerox 3 and 5 side by side, they both sounded very similar. So, I bet you heard the differences. From this sound and switch test, if you're someone that's looking for a little more clacky mouse, then the Aerox 3 and 5 offer that. But if you want something a little quieter and with a slightly lower sound profile, then the Aerox 9 would be that mouse. All of them offer the same switches and have very similar modded travel when clicking the left and right mouse button, as well as the side buttons. The only mouse that was an exception and had really short travel for its side buttons was the Aerox 9. However, you didn't come here for only a sound and switch test. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Obviously, one would like to know how each mouse performs when using it and seeing if it has that right fit and grip for your hand. So, after testing all of these out for a couple of weeks, I personally thought they are great when using them for day-to-day -day PC use and gaming. The PTFE Glide Skates make swiping for super fast mouse movements perfect for gaming and I've tested them both on hard and soft mouse pads, and they glide freely and move really well across both pads. The True Move Air Sensor that's co-developed with PixArt really performs well, and the SteelSeries GG software provides a lot of options for each of these mice to adjust the CPI and acceleration, as well as deceleration or even the pulling rate and angle snapping for the mice. But all these things that I've mentioned when using them can all vary for each user since all these mice differ in dimensions and buttons. So it can all come down to what you're planning on using them for, or even the size of your hand may be the difference in which one you get. Therefore, the grip would be a big factor in determining which one to get. And if you're someone who has a palm grip, then the Aerox 5 and 9 are the ones that would be the best out of all these, since they are much longer in length and wider than the Aerox 3 and your fingers and the bottom part of your palm of your hand will be able to grip the mouse more comfortably. With the Aerox 3, you can still get a palm grip, but the mouse is smaller and your fingertips will go over the buttons if you got big hands. Now, if you have a claw grip, both the Aerox 5 and 9 are also great mice for this grip, as both offer better wrist movement and faster gliding. 
As for the Aerox 3, you can get a decent claw grip, but if you got bigger hands, it might not be as great. It's actually more ideal for the finger grip, since it's a much smaller mouse. Also, I personally think if SteelSeries went ahead and added a more texturized grip to both the left and right hand side for all these mice, it would make these grips that I went over even better. It could have been nice if the silicone grip that's on my G502 was added to these mice, but you and I would know that this would add more weight to these lightweight mice, and that wouldn't be great. But personally, that's the only thing that I thought could be better or more improved. However, when it really comes down to all of them, the Aerox 3 is a solid lightweight gaming mouse that I would get if I were on the go a lot, since it's smaller and more compact. Or if you have really small hands and want an ideal finger grip mouse that is ambidextrous, then it could definitely be the one you're looking for. Now, the Aerox 5 for my test is more for someone who is looking for a mouse that offers a solid claw or palm grip and is a great lightweight MMO gaming mouse. With the three side buttons, it could be a good replacement for a mouse similar to a G502 if you want something lighter and are a serious gamer. As for the Aerox 9, it's the ultimate lightweight MOBA gaming mouse that's great when you need a lot of shortcuts for your games or programs. If you're someone who also does a lot of video editing or possibly music production, then this mouse is a great time saver with its numerous amount of side buttons that can really help you out with accessing things faster, and it's still relatively light for its size. Overall, all of these SteelSeries mice offer a lot for various gamers or day-to-day -day PC users who are looking for a light wireless mouse. I have to say that they are solid mice out of the box, even though I question their build quality at first. However, one thing I didn't like is the side grip on these mice. I just wish they added a slightly different design on the sides without adding weight so to offer a better grip, but that's not really a big deal. The sensors and PTFE feet are good and its honeycomb RGB design really makes these mice stand out and lightweight. Anyways, let me know if you're getting any of these mice in the comments below and if you like this video, smash that like and subscribe button and I hope to see you back here for the next video.